Here's a little bit of background for the town board meeting of Sanford in April. In September, around September 9th of last year, the first two drilling units were applied for by XTO. And that would be the Dudeck unit and the Semfer unit. And the well pads for them, as per the applications, were here and here. Now, I'm not saying they're related, but the campground on Gill, Gill Road is about here. And the Frank Chamberlain one applied for trailer park is right about here. Uh, or campground, I don't know what the technical term is. I was confused when I was here because I'm thinking, well, how will they get to the wellhead? they got to drive all the way around. But if you listen to the town board meeting, you'll hear that evidently the application includes application for hiking trails. So that would put it, both of these will be directly adjacent, abutting the property that will have the well pad, so they'll be able to walk right back to the well pad if that's what these are used for. Interesting enough, both are claiming that their applications, I believe, are for places to hold weddings. But of course, uh, you could be the judge on that. So here's the town board meeting. Delivery is 0 0.989 a gallon. 0 0.989 a gallon. Now, liquid calcium chloride bulk plant, you're at uh, 0 0.970. Female inclusive certificate design. Excuse me? Chance, who's providing the liquid calcium chloride? Who is this? Yeah. This is Supco Corporation. That Pennsylvania-based corporation, Portland, New, Portland, New York. Okay. And is there is there alternate for granular, or is it need to be liquid? Uh, we always use liquid usually on our gravel roads here. It's used for what? For the dirt roads, the gravel roads here. Okay. okay. Stabilization and uh, dust control. Okay. Right. Yes. Multiple times, you should ask them, guys. That's yeah. that agreeable. 
Excuse me, do we? Yeah. You can save us a lot of time. I've told Chamberlain several times, I don't want that travel trailer to park on Farm Road, but he won't believe me. So I'm thinking maybe if you tell him with David, Duke, but he doesn't believe it. The zoning board, he doesn't believe the planning board. So you can save us a lot of trouble if you just say no, we can get out of your hair. I'm assuming that a lot of you are here tonight in reference to that uh, with the, uh, uh, I believe there's always two sides to every story. In fact, I think there's, there's some people here that actually requested us to go through some of our regulations <coughs> as far as our uh, code enforcement. Uh, we did reference this to the lawyer which I think you were at the meeting last month, it was uh, uh, Mr. Chamberlain brought up a lawyer to uh, indicate that um, he had an interest to go forward with this. We turned that information over to our lawyer. And um, basically, the board has is, is, uh, put it to the this information, I, I'm stuttered here a little. <clears throat> We've turned it over basically to the lawyer for information. And he recommended to the, the board that um, we ask the planning board to make a study on our regulations in reference to um, Well, really, they want to look at look at all of our regulations, but basically, it's in reference to uh, um, agriculture and um, um, trailers, and <clears throat> we got to clarify if, as far as um, recreation trailers and that type of thing, and. So at this point, we're, the board is going to turn it over to the uh, planning board for a study. Uh, and we're going to wait for the planning board to do that study. We're not making a decision here tonight on the phone. No. It, um, it's, there's no, I think there needs to be a study done on it. See? It's starting to get on my nerves a little bit because we've been down to the planning board. I don't know how many times we've been to the zoning board. Of course, it's the first time here to the town board. And we're not any farther than when it started, you know. And uh, I'm just thinking if they do put that trailer park in, it's going to disrupt a lot of people's lives and, and uh, mine mainly. <coughs> so that's why I want to see put us put an end to it. Well, I think to be fair to everybody, there should be information that comes from the planning board. Yeah. It, um, the planning board's going to have to look at it. Uh, we have had people that's, that's in the crowd that have asked us to uh, look at our regulations in reference to other things too. And, um, so. Our regulations are, are getting old, and there's a lot of things that have changed. But, um, but we got to look at both sides of it, and so the board would like to have the uh, planning board make a study on that. And after they make that study, they can come back to the uh, town board with their recommendation, uh, and at that time. Town board will have to make a decision. Appreciate it, uh, I, <coughs> Go ahead. Are they going to check? I guess it sounds like they're going to check all the variances and everything on the books, not just trailers or RVs. Or check well, all basically, I think at this point, the main thing is is this issue. This issue has come up several times, and uh, there, 
like I say, there's two sites and that, that right. is it. Uh, can, can you be less vague, please, when you say there's Excuse different me, sites? Just, just a minute, uh, let him finish, please. So they're, when you say you sent it over to the planning board, I'm assuming they're going to check all the zoning for trailers and anything to do with any type of situation that we're talking about on front of the road. In other words, they're going to they, look at all the, all the zoning laws or just the specific. Well, you see, that's not just the only issue we have. We have another issue up Gill Road, which is up past my farm. <coughs> uh, it's a little bit different, but similar. Um, I believe where Frank Chamberlain is at the present time is zoned for trailers. Um, no, but it's uh, I believe it's zoned for. I think it's zoned for trailers now. No, it's not. Trailers is not in the law. Mixed use means you could put a trailer, a single trailer, or have a house there. It allows you flexibility to have what. That's basically what I'm trying to say, and I believe, um, I think code enforcement officer here can help me out a little bit on this if I misspeak. Um, but I think the thing that uh, Frank is trying to do is a little bit different. And the gentleman is up the uh, Gill Road as, as something that's even a little different yet. And I don't think we have regulations that really specify exactly how that issue should be handled. And um, I know the court enforcement officer here is new, but uh, is there anything you could add to that? Uh, no. Uh, it needs to go through the <coughs> process, and you have process in effect. So, once the application is made, the planning board is EPA, where the notice to first does the uh, initial investigation on it, and it combines with that. And if it's a big area, then it goes on from there. So I don't know whether I explained that very good. Well, it's the planning board will make the decision, or the zoning board will make the decision with the help of the attorney. So if that language or that what they're requesting to do is allowed in that area. Uh, I think if I get it straight, now that's basically under the existing regulations now. Yeah. Yeah. I think what the board is asking for under the advice of the lawyer mm -hmm. is to make a study on the whole issue, Absolutely. Absolutely. which after they make that study, uh, which will clarify some things that will help make that decision. Right. And, uh, and so that's really at the process that we're at at this point. Needs to be researched. Yes. Yeah. I think your current laws um, deal with this quite clearly. It says. Um, in section 609, section C, um, that you shall not alter the essential character of the neighborhood that these developments are going into. And this would obviously change the character of the neighborhood on Farm Road. Absolutely. That would depend on what the zoning is in that area. So what you're asking for is to change the zoning laws, and all these people are here to tell you we don't want to change. And I can't imagine the zoning board of appeals would do that. Well, you can update the letter to include uh, like a yeah, like a mobile home or a trailer. It could be five yards, six yards wide. But you can't start changing a zoning law in essence. Now there is an issue that maybe the zoning the the mobile home law needs to be looked at and updated, but the, you have to do it in very little sections, very specifically, and then say, tell the planning board, in a comprehensive study, do we want train parks, do we need them at all, and if yes, where would we want those? And I would like for you to direct the zoning board to approach it, the planning board to approach it that way. And then clearly, in existing areas where there is uh, a mobile home law that was intended in the comprehensive plan to allow a landowner to build one house, or one mobile home on a little strip of land next to the road, 
it can never have been intended to be used to put the trailer park up. And well, we can all agree that another 34 year old needs to be, law needs to be written, but the intention of the law and where people are here, what we bought into, what we wanted, how we liked it to be, <coughs> that, that cannot be to allow landowners to start putting up stuff that was just never envisioned. In contravention of the rural nature of the area, which was, you know, I personally came into this area and it was rural, it was beautiful. And this was not a zoning that was contemplated when I've invested 15 years of my life and my family's resources into developing a use that's consistent with that law. And, and I, I can't understand why it's even be considered. Well, I'll use myself for an example. <clears throat> I've been here a lot longer than 15 years. Yes, you have. And what is proposed to be done up the road past my place, uh, it can affect, for example, that that road. We, we almost plug that road when we're filling our silos and everything. So that uh, will make a big change to our operation personally. But at the same time, <clears throat> I think I have to be fair and and let the, let the planning board go ahead and make make a study and let, let them determine exactly where we want to go with this and then they can recommend it to the, to the town board. I think I, I doubt know. if things will, I don't know. I, I doubt I think the planning board should much. do that, but they should do that in the understanding that, you know, that we all have a usage up there that was based upon decades of existing law and we've adhered to that law and we've invested in that law as it was proposed and as, as it has been and to just turn around willy-nilly and change it for the benefit of one self-serving resident of the street is at the contravention of the interests of others it's just, I don't understand, I never thought that would happen here and, I, and I'm here in front of all of these people today and I'm going to say, I'm shocked I'm shocked. I've been shocked, and I'm, I'm disappointed. Not it's going to be changed. I hope it's not. I mean, the, the, basically, what I'm saying is that I, um, that I hear you, and I understand you. I trust you, and well, I, I just want you to hear what I have to say about it because I've never spoken to you personally about it, and and this is how I feel. I've spoken to David about it, but privately, and and this is just you know because I care. I care a lot about this area. I care a lot. I, I because it matters to me. Well, and this is, I, I think, just. I understand that very much. <clears throat> I mean, it's just it sad. I think it's sad. But I, mean, I know it matters to you, and I trust yeah. you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. This is something to do. Well, Tony, I guess your hands are tied according to like rules of engagement. You have to. You can't do anything about it as a town board. Has to go. He has to subpoena or talk to the zoning board or the planning board before anything can even be considered, right? And then it has to be out to the public again, I'm assuming. And then it goes back to you guys. It will right? end up. It will end up back to us. So you can't do anything right now because it's out of your hands. It's. Um, I think it should go through process. <coughs> the same as. as so the zoning board or the planning board should have enough intelligence on them. Whatever they do, they decide. They have to talk about it. Figure things out. Is it good? Is it bad? Can we change the laws arbitrarily? Is it whatever? Then they make their recommendations back to you guys. But in all this process, the public is still participating. Yeah. I mean, that's my it's, concern. It's, uh, basically, it will go through the planning board. That's where it should go. And, um, and they will recommend to the board what their recommendations are. And then it will become a situation where the board has to make a decision. So the planning board will have meetings that the public can go to. Yes. Uh -huh. Excuse me, Julie. Yep. Now, the way I understand it, George, up the end of the yoga road, he was talking about like a pavilion, just so when he has parties, people could get under a roof. Frank's talking about putting 20 trailers and three acres of land when even if you put a home on a house trailer there, you, you only put one on, on two acres, right? Yeah. 
Exactly. Well, and you got to have exactly. so much gold tonnage for each trailer. Uh, George, well, he come right. He brought a lawyer, and he brought a, a consultant, and he brought uh, one other gentleman. I can't remember what his title was. Come right to my place, and, and he was a gentleman about it. Wanted to know what my feelings was, and at that time, it was um, <clears throat> basically very similar to what we're talking about now which would be campsites and uh, uh, he wants to make trails and things so that uh, people could uh, go through the woods and then I think it's changed several times. I think I've heard also that he wants to have a pavilion, possibly weddings and um, I don't know whether it would end up like Kelly Stone Park or I don't know, yeah. but it's a uh, um, different things that he has brought up. Yeah. And, uh, See, you're, also, you're also talking about a road that has virtually non-existent traffic right now. There's very little traffic on the old road. Well, if you went back a few years, there was hardly any traffic. That's why I said there is some traffic now there because people do live up there and they cook, but it's not, I mean, Farm Road, when I was a kid going up visiting my grandmother, if you saw 10 cars go down the hill all day other than Dick's honey wagon, it, it, was, it was a big bet. Am I wrong? <laughs> now it's, I mean, I take my life in my hands every time I pull out my driveway. Well, That's unfortunately, I can't pee in my garden without people knowing. So, the cars come by all the time. I'm with I'm all respect, that. Just, well, that's the truth. That's the truth. Whatever traffic, and that cuts into the problem. If you're not against that, that's up to you. I'm just saying, I think it's not against it. I think it's the way it is. Well, I mean, the things are changing. Two trucks passing me in a day at one time. You and I can't control that. No, and if you if you um, want to put if you want to put a hundred trailers across the set old seven or uh, forty one from you in your big old field, I don't care. But I don't want all those people going up and down my road. They, you know, I mean, these guys live hard, they play hard, and ten feet I, from my you property. You read my letter last time, so I'll leave it at that. That's like ten feet from my property and my twelve year old daughter. Uh, that's just like. That's not at all what we envision. I but we're wasting our time with these arguments, aren't we? Because my we need to come back and say it all again after the planning board has looked at it. My, my question to you is, who are the two sides? I don't see the two sides. You're asking these questions faster than I think we can okay. well, answer them. Well, Frank should answer them. Frank, the self-serving individual who's proposing this should answer these questions, but he's not. He's letting you do it. And that's what's wrong no, about this. No, because he's no, put you in a position I, the, to do that. I think this is wrong. I think answer, as a community, I think we're going down the wrong route. In reference to the town, I'm trying to handle regulations. It um, uh, depends on how far you want to go back. The young fellow back here, which is folks with, and his grand folks are my neighbors. Well, if you want to go back that far, <laughs> there wasn't any regulations. Uh, well, there weren't any cars either. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. well, Lawrence has been but, in New York for 400 as, years. But as so, the you, know, uh, you get more regulations. I'm sorry, I, I, and, uh, I'm very, that's very personal. Um, <coughs> not only from the town, but the county, state, oh, and federal. Do we, yeah. My question to you is, who do you believe the two sides are? Because I don't see them. This is legalization of a man camp. That's exactly what this is. And Herb Klein, your attorney, represents multiple towns, and most likely these same rules are going to go out to other towns. Now, you as a town board supervisor, if an industry came to our, our town, <coughs> would you rather have the people deposit benefiting by rentals, or would you rather have this all dropped in, all the benefit dropped on one person con in contradiction of the wishes of everybody in that valley, which is far and remote? Well, 
why and you why would you, you as a town board be passing this study on to the planning board when you could see strongly a popular resentment to the change of the rules most of the people here are very happy with the rules as they are mm -hmm. and in addition to that why don't would we if we submit our own plan our own suggestion to Herb Klein for a change of the rules which most likely will be very similar to what's currently there can we have that immediately? Are you going to pass that to the planning board? How many hours is the town attorney going to occupy? If we were to all submit some sort of application to the town attorney, how many hours are we going to invest in for clients' time to the taxpayers? Are we going to really pay for it? Uh, I'm I'll, a I'll also let so you know that I, want to know. I just want to make one point that when I call the town attorney, it's understandable he says he won't talk to me because he only reports to the town board. But I'd appreciate it if you tell your town attorney, Herb Klein, that he should talk to the people of the town when they call and they have questions about what the drafts of these new laws are. Because we shouldn't have to have maybe one week to review a law before we show up. If there's some his, his duty, preliminary draft, we'd appreciate it. is to the, the board. We understand that. And uh, the board hires him and we work, we work with the attorney for advice. But French lawyers, the question French he talks to her, her client, he's so a, he, to every to email he, he Every email Frank's attorney sends to Herb Klein, how much does Herb Klein bill the town of Sanford for? Because Herb Klein answers an email, he answers a phone call to Frank's attorney. How much is that costing me? I pay taxes here. How much is that costing me? That part is not costing me anything. So it's free. So Herb Klein deals with Frank for free, is what you're telling me. No, he deals with the town. If we submit, submit a modification to the rules of the town land we, rules, we, you'll pass that on to the town board as if we have a hired attorney to do that. If you hire an attorney? Yes, if we I, have I, an I, attorney, I hire an attorney, you'll allow us to submit our, our proposal to Herb Klein, and then when it comes to you, you'll say you'll pass it on to the planning board, because obviously we have a lot of people interested in our change, which would probably be very little. Okay. It, um, so I, I think probably what you're referring to was uh, the information from the last meeting where I indicated that uh, the young lady that's representing uh, uh, Frank, uh, who it's all lawyers basically communicate back and forth. Um, the question that was asked at that time, uh, I wanted it to be correctly put so that the town lawyer could understand exactly what it is and that's how that issue got started with the town lawyer and that and at that meeting uh, you were upset afterwards I can understand some of that uh, but we have to work with the lawyer you but we also have to work with the with the public you know, right but you allow the public, my attorney the public and right you'll allow my attorney to submit a proposal to Herb Klein for land use laws just like you did with Frank. Frank Chamberlain, right? I'm and I then think, when it comes I back believe, to you, you'll put it, put it to the planning board. I, I believe you already got attorneys that are working. I, did you hear my, uh, my question yes, is when I, I have a, I you'll allow my attorney to submit. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be a decision that the board would have to make. So you'll allow me to submit it to-, to I'm sure court. that you can write a letter to our attorney. Uh, am I going to get the same um, service that her that uh, Frank I'm Chamberlain sure the provided? Would respond back to the town board, and this will come back to you, and you'll forward it to the planning board. Has Frank's attorney has had the same generosity? This is what we say. We're going to have the same privilege as right? right? Frank's attorney has really had because we're different. we're feeling. Our hands tied. Okay. I, as a neighbor, I'm feeling my hands are tied here. And, and, uh, and I have sorry, just one last that, question. I wish I did. Uh, and you feel your hands are tied here tonight, right? They, they, and you I have don't. the privilege of expressing your opinion. Now, I'm your sorry. hands are not tied. I have one last question before I sit down, and that is if industry does come to this area, do you want the town to benefit or a single person? I want everybody to benefit. I want everybody. Uh, everything that basically we do, um, 
went in with industry already. Um, and I think there's people here that look at it, and, which I know they do because I've seen some pamphlets that have been handed out uh, where the town <coughs> tries to, I won't say force industry, but encourage industry to make it very open to the public uh, so that the public can participate. For example, I'm going to say Constitution, uh, where we move to the town board so that we as a board try to advise industry to be as open as they can to the town of Sanford. <coughs> Uh, they hadn't had any meetings in the town of Sanford, but they were going to put the pipeline all the way through the town of Sanford. So we're pushing, if their pipeline is going to be in the town of Sanford, the town of Sanford people should be rewarded. I don't know whether that's the right word because most people don't want the pipeline, but if they're going to get it anyway, I want the town of Sanford people to be treated as good as they possibly can. It, the board has been pushing that. We have me, and that comes across to a lot of people that the board is pushing the pipeline. We're not pushing the pipeline. We, <clears throat> we basically are not in favor of the pipeline. But the pipeline's coming from Pennsylvania. We would rather, the pipeline was, was here pumping uh, New York State gas, if you were interested in that. So we're, we're trying to protect people in the town of Sanford as best we can. It doesn't come across all the time as if we are. But when we, we submit a bill for our vehicle being tore up on the farm road? Mm -hmm. Excuse me? When we submit a, a bill for our vehicles that are being tore up on the farm road? We've already had that. Um, in fact, I went on a tour with uh, JD, and a gentleman stopped us at, uh, and indicated that the mud was getting into his brakes and ruining his brakes. I indicated that to a representative from uh, Bluestone, and Bluestone indicated that they would get in touch with that that individual, and I had the impression that they were going to possibly pay for the repairs of the truck. That'd be nice because they could replace my oil pads. But I, I personally, I mean, like, Patrice and I are, are so far apart on everything but this issue. <laughs> Just so as everybody's clear, I'm not against gas drilling, I'm not against the pipeline, I'm not against any of that. I'm against this. Just so that everybody's clear. Yeah, apart. You're talking right now. Uh, I, here, here. Uh, here, here. Excuse, excuse me. Am I on the Well, I know you received um, like 100 about a year ago. 
between the zoning board and the planning board, there were 70 people in here one night. Everybody, everybody, everybody there was against this. And this is just I'm, going I'm on, and on, on and on and on. I'm not trying it's to take such it out a, It's like a really festering wound. I have way better things to do with my time than to take 10 hours off of work to come here. Dave, you know what it's like to work for All of you know what it's like to work for a living. I've told them a hundred times, I don't want it there, period. There's no two sides to this, like he was saying before. There's only one side. Everybody here doesn't want it. It's all for the you benefit of one Frank, person. Why is people this people happening? Up? Well, you know, it's the rest of us that put you people there because we thought so much of you. And I hope that you don't let us down. Well, we are talking about 20 trailers. And they don't even know how many people or pipe buyers are going to be in each one of these trailers. We could be talking to 80 people. It's just an inappropriate but location. What we're talking about is more than just what Frank is doing. Well, the other thing, the, the um, point that you brought up was you thought that the, the place up behind you was similar. It's nowhere near similar, do we? This affects a pile of people. That place up behind you basically affects you and your farm. And so, I so what it happened so, there? <laughs> <laughs> Not to be real, you don't care what happens to me. Absolutely. You don't care. I I absolutely care what happens to you. I don't want to drag this on and on. If you don't want that up there, I'm going to fight for you. I do You got your back. You got your back. I'm with you. I'm just hoping that you have the same respect for me that I have for you. Because there is no and way I, how and I would like the same, same, same thing. I would like to say have the same thing. I've known you and your father for a long time, lived next to you. Long, long and, time. And, and, and the respect goes back a long time. I hope you have the same respect for me under these same circumstances. If it happens, I'll be pleased. So far, it hasn't happened. Yeah. Well, like I said, I, if, if you don't want it, that's fine. If you do want it, that's fine. I just I'm just i not saying I don't want it either way. All I'm saying is no, let the process work. You're still part of the process. But I can't afford to keep staying, going in here. Staying here tonight and, and basically criticizing the board. Who's criticizing? Well, we're not criticizing no, the board. No, 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 well, this should be decided over. I'm sorry. This is the process. Yes. 150 okay. miles today. Okay, you got to speak one time. I can't sorry. keep up with you one at a time. You I have no problem with the board. Most of you know me as it is. I have no problem with any of you. I've known you when you were just you know me before I can remember me. <laughs> <laughs> but my point is, is and it's not to do with the board. I'm getting frustrated here. I'm getting extremely frustrated. Or I wouldn't be here at all. You know me, I'm pretty much just perfectly content to hide on my little piece of my property and, and that's that. The fact that I have to keep coming down here, not to just the town board, the zoning board, yeah. the board of appeals, it, it's killing me here. I think I even know who sold it to you. <laughs> I think I even know who sold it to you. <laughs> and so, Rather than just drag on and on and on, and that's what I'm trying to get to go to a process, and you're going to all have the opportunity to participate in that process. But you're still missing my point, because I've already participated and participated, and it just doesn't stop. Well, we've got to do something to get this stopped, okay? When I said that, to get this whole thing stopped. I'm not saying to stop any individual thing. What I'm saying is, this has been going on, it's gone through a couple processes already. It's got to, it's gonna have to be settled. Yes. Because it's not gonna go away. It's and what we're away. trying to do is, is go through the process of trying to get this settled. But I thought with the laws already in place, it should have already been settled by the Board of Appeals. Well, it's only it's already it's there, so like, no. Things are going to have to be. we got to look at this process every once in a while. I, I get that, I do. But, uh, but, I mean, it's already been looked at. There's, there's not really much to, to go with here. It's one person against everybody else in this room. We could do, we could deal with some modifications, but not Can I, can I ask one more question, please? Mr. Snyder, would you say something? <laughs> uh, said enough. I think 
suggested by the uh, chairperson of the Zoning Board of Appeals, uh, have a moratorium on further development so that there is actually time for the process and that we have the transparency that we need, that there's time for review and that in the meantime we're not going to have further investments towards the development so that especially we're not going to be confronted with the situation that a year from now he's going to say, I've made all these investments already and I tell you, now you tell me I can't do this, <coughs> for example, but other things could happen too. If you need to review the law, and if we need, if that is the process that you've decided, could we at the same time say no more further development until this has been reviewed, and that we have had a chance to input, and if need be, come back and say our piece again? Is that possible? Well, basically, <coughs> if somebody wants to, wants to develop something, they come to the, the public enforcement office. If, if something that wants to be done that is within the rules at the present time, he will indicate yes or no, or he'll turn it over to the uh, uh, Board of Appeals, the Planning Board, for review. As far as stopping everything, we're not trying to stop everything. No. But what, what we're talking about is this issue that, uh, that we're talking about now. <coughs> That can't go forward until we go through this process, if that's what you're worried about. If they're not, for example, Frank, he can't build that, that uh, trailer park until it is approved. Yeah, so it's and so basically what the board is saying, let this go through a process and determine once and for all if things need to be changed a little bit. Maybe there's other things that need to be changed other, other than there's other issues that they're going to have to look at other than just this park. So could we say then that there could be no further development that's inconsist inconsistent with the existing land use law until the planning board has reviewed it, until all of this has gone through? So just as a, as a so for example, this wouldn't go through as, as you've already said because it's not in, it's not in conformance with the existing law. In other words, there's not going to be the special board, exemptions. The board isn't going to do anything tonight except turn it over to the planning board for study. That, that's basically what the board's doing tonight. Okay. What exactly that's what we want. Kind of that's what we want. Well, who so. has that formal auditorium? Well, the chairman of the uh, Board of Appeals has recommended stuff. And basically, when they have to make when there's things brought to them, they have to make decisions. And they don't feel that um, the regulations really are specified or give them the guidance that they really need to make some of these decisions. 
And so that's where we need to go with the study. It's, uh, it's not that we're trying to change anything. We're just trying to improve what we have. It's, um, and this gentleman has to work with those regulations, so I, I Well, this, this isn't unique to town of Sanford. Town of Windsor, town of Plaza, town of Bangkok are all looking into changes that have to be made to keep up with this progress. Mm -hmm. None of these towns <coughs> have language in their site plans or their codes that address specific I things. Two different sections. They, do. they do, actually. Very clear. They do. And they're very clear and they, and they say no. Yes, they are. That's uh, why you have a planning board. Right. You're yelling so at the man here. No, what I'm telling you is they say no. You just said they don't Let have those plan. laws, but they do. Let the planning board do okay. their process. Let the planning board say they do have these laws. Is that what you're saying? Well, they'll make this you said, No, I, I'm a, I object to what you've just said. Oh, I'm sorry. I know you're sorry. But you need to go through the process, just like Mr. Decker has said. And, and go through the process. The process has already said that these laws exist. You just said they didn't exist. That's what I objected. No, we, we, don't have a, we need a recreational this vehicle this park law. We need a recreational Currently, they are not permitted. Currently, they are not permitted. with the wrong people. They're not permitted currently. Under current law, they're not permitted. the public hearing because I think we've already heard. Do you want... You'll be, the last, you'll be the last one. I got one question. If you, if you had an epiphany right now and you said, you, and you could say, this is done, this is not going to happen, I don't want it, what, can you legally do that? Yes. And no, then no. can you still go to these other boards and do appeals or whatever they do? In other words, if you say right now, no, Frank, you can't I'm do this, say, this, is it done? <clears throat> I'm going to say probably this board here can make a decision right here tonight. And then, then there will be certain people that would say, well, this board would listen to me. You could do that, but it would still be... It's got, it's got to go through the process. It would be dead in the water. Whatever. It's got to go through the process so that it's fair to everybody. I mean, if there, if the people here are, are interested in basically... Most of the people here are interested in one issue. Next meeting, it might be people that are interested right, in, right. in a, the other side. I'm just wondering. I mean, there's two sides to everything. Right, I realize that. Dude, I, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> <fighting over. laughs> I'm just on the road. But the point is, one side. I'm wondering if the board has that power to say, "This is Frank." You, no, this is it's it. I mean, you said I want to build a rifle range in my backyard. You said to me, "No, you can't do it." It's going to. Yeah, end up, it's going to end up back here with this board before it gets through. But couldn't I go to the zoning and say, "I want to." Try to rezone or re something up there past the board, or is that it? That's what I'm saying. In other words, if it's just your decision, fine. Can you go past you? It's already not I have, allowed. I have seen where, I won't say I've seen it, I've heard where actually the uh, a lawsuit can end up between a board and a board. So it doesn't, it's the, not necessarily. Uh, I, I don't think that's. Going to happen very often, but I I do know of it happening where there are disagreements, issues that can develop between the authority of the planning board and the authority of the town board. But they're not even going to go there. But um, <clears throat> basically, let it go through the process. And um, now I. I think we went through this enough tonight. Does anybody have anything else other than uh, well, just one thing? Kern Klein is forwarding three proposals to the town to the planning board. Could you also could he also make those available for the, the public? Now, what what do you mean, Kern Klein has made? I believe. Well, when you forward this to the planning board, could it also be forwarded to us? I know Kern Klein has this uh, proposal. No, her her plan does not have any proposal. It does not. Well, when it is forwarded to the planning board, could it also be forwarded to us? You're hearing exactly what's going to happen right here tonight. But didn't her plan, in reaction but, to a question, well, there's be prepared paper. legal options for you, what you could do, like a straight out no, or tell Frank to use the use variance route like he did last year, and then it's a very different process of appealing because I, it's a I called I called our lawyer, and, and this is the last time I'm going to say it, I called our lawyer for advice the same as you would. 
and you're, you would hire a lawyer to give you advice which you can't, which you don't understand or you want help. That's the same thing that we did. And the lawyer, we pay him for that advice, and he gives us a whole list of, of, of how you should legally handle it. That's right. That is. That's what we're talking about. That's what. That's and the disconnect so to say. Can we see these options? Like the gentleman said over here, we could kill. This board could kill it right exactly. tonight. Exactly. Exactly. We wish you would. Let's we make a motion. Let's it's kill not, it. It's not. It's not right for the board to kill something, just plain kill it without. Having it go through a process. But why not? It's killing we us. We spent two people. years on this. Ten, fifty, sixty people said no, and one person says okay. yes. I'm going to close the meeting right here now. Okay. I'm uh, sorry. Public portion. Um, I believe you all understand that now. Um, there's a lady sitting right here in the crowd here tonight that asked us a, a couple months ago to make a study on some issues to do with. It. And so there's. There's another site, though. But those are two separate things. An update of the law is There's not the same as allowing a trading park. There's two separate things of everything. I mean, it's, uh, I'm, I'm sure you and your husband get along very good, but you have issues with small, too. And you have to listen. Never. <laughs> anyway, well, we'll see each other again. Then. So we're, 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 uh, we're, uh, against the town or any officer, appointee, or employee of the town. Section 2, this resolution shall take effect immediately. I don't know why they can understand that. <laughs> uh, it's something that we don't have a choice. Yeah. It, uh, it's basically has to be approved. It, uh, so I'll move. Clear second. Kilmer. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. I did talk to her on that, but, um, but I don't think I understand it really enough to explain it. Yes. <laughs> Shall we go to number three? Yes. 
Okay, uh, that's a resolution authorizing supervisor to enter into agreement with Coughlin and Gerhardt, LLP, and Herbert A. Klein, Esquire, to provide legal services. You want this right? Um, yeah. Okay. Whereas section 22B of the town law of the state of New York authorizes a town board of a town of the second class, such as the town of Sanford, to employ an attorney to give it such professional service and advice as it may require. And whereas the highway superintendent of the town has encountered certain difficulties in requiring Bluestone Gas Corporation of New York to adhere to its responsibilities pursuant to a road use and crossing agreement, dated October 12, 2011, between the town and Bluestone. And whereas attorney for the town, Herbert A. Klein, has advised the town board, it would be advantageous to the town if Paul Sweeney, Esquire of Coughlin and Gerhardt, because of his expertise in such matters, was to assist the town highway superintendent relating to the said matter. And whereas attorneys have offered to provide such services relative thereto as set forth in an agreement between the town and said attorneys approved by the town board on January 8, 2013. And whereas the town now desires to retain said attorneys to perform such services. Now, therefore, the town board of the town of Sanford in regular session, duly convened, does hereby authorize the supervisor to allow the the attorneys to provide such assistance as the town highway superintendent shall request to require Bluestone to adhere to its responsibilities under the agreement in a timely fashion for which the town shall pay the attorneys for said services performed at the rate of $200 per hour devoted to such matter pursuant to the January 8, 2013 agreement between the town and the attorneys. Second, authorize Herbert A. Klein, Esquire, attorney for the town, to render such assistance as shall be required by the attorneys on such matter to be paid for such services performed at the rate of $200 per hour, devoted to such matter, and that such services are not included in his annual retainer as attorney for the town. For the above services as outlined, the attorneys and Herbert A. Klein will submit appropriate vouchers to the town periodically for audit and payment of the work completed at that time. This resolution shall take effect immediately. <coughs> well, does everybody understand that? It's just extra. Well, the money was going to be coming from, if it's my understanding, do we, is it out of, they'll come out of their legal services fund, right? I'm not, I'm a little concerned about that. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to have to get this clarified from uh, her. We have a legal uh, attorney's fund, which uh, is to deal with uh, when we have issues to uh, work through an attorney and with Ron Lake. Um, that's, I know that's for when you go out to look at pipe and that type of thing. Now, I'm not sure how this is going to work when we are hiring lawyers to for the town to make them adhere to the rules. Now, there is in our agreement there is a uh, a section in there that uh, allows them to disagree with certain payments <clears throat> and in that process uh, uh, they can uh, I guess hire a negotiator and the town can hire a negotiator to settle those issues. I'm not sure how this is going to work. 
Um, I've got to talk with her about this. I don't know whether we're creating. I guess I'm just concerned mm -hmm. because uh, we're we're creating a engineer, basically a, a lawyer cost that they will consider as fighting them. So I don't know how that's going to work, but that's something I'm going to have to look into. Do we ask? I didn't, I didn't get that letter. I, I've been to most of the meetings that, with Jay. Uh -huh. uh, <clears throat> weather determines a lot on how fast they can do things. Um, but if they're fighting, fixing the roads, and in that letter they promised people on the road that they're going to fix the road. We, we believe they're going to fix the road. What, what they're doing now is temporary fix. Uh, when the frost was going out and those big trucks was going over, oh, yeah, you would have a problem right here today. Uh, and they would fix that and before the day was out, it busted up. Oh, I know. They, I know. Uh, they, 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 they couldn't keep up with it. I know. Well, <coughs> but if they're admitting, why do you have to have a lawyer, though? Yeah. If, they're saying, if they're admitting that they want to fix the road and be good neighbors. Well, this is the issue that we're discussing a little bit right now. There was um, there was situations where JD which was trying to make sure that the roads were passable for the, our public transportation. And I know there was several times that I rode around, I rode around with him, that well it, it was very difficult to move over these roads. Um, unfortunately, they couldn't um, move forward in the summer. Things kept getting, and the weather, they were working in the worst kind of weather. And when the frost goes out, the roads go fall apart. And so it was, a, it's a situation where the town is trying to protect the public. And they're trying. They're, they're trying to do things to satisfy the town, and unfortunately, the weather was a um, very difficult thing to work with. Um, <clears throat> they thought they were moving fast enough to um, do temporary work, but the town didn't figure they were they were responding. Fast enough, and that's the reason why, like J, JD indicated, that when they first started over in by Gulf Summit, out through there, I mean they, they just turned right out through, and and they. The big issue is really, <clears throat> let me back up. You take gravel roads; they come in and they built, rebuild a lot of those roads up there, so they could even move their equipment out. The problem really developed when they got onto the blacktop roads, which they couldn't do anything with blacktop roads. And our roads are not built to handle that kind of equipment. And, and once that equipment went over it, and the frost went out, it just crumbled, and it just mud just came right up through. And, and uh, I thought we had a million bonds. Didn't we have a million dollar bond to fix this? And no, then wasn't so there a, a grow fund that you could draw from and then they would replenish it as soon as it was drying out and you could just do this and fix it? We see it, everything has to be pick, fixed on a temporary basis at this point. So that's <clears> when, when, they get all, when they get all through the temporary and the water gets straightened out, they're going to come in and rebuild the roads. Then what is the lawyer going to do? That you just had a motion that you're going to hire the lawyer? What is he going to do? What is we want a lawyer to be with us on board, I do, I, well, let, me, let me say from my aspect, I want a lawyer to be on board here, so if I need legal counsel, 
I go the proper way of doing things. Mm -hmm. you know? If it's like you're not in perfect. It's not saying that we need to go there every day oh. to the lawyer. I want somebody, you know, and I want everybody to be notified here and on standby. So if something doesn't turn out the way it should turn out, I want to have, I want to have legal counsel here so I have somebody to protect the township. And you know, I don't want to. It sounded like we were already. No. Exactly. It sounded no. like you needed them to stick to the agreements. Right. I don't want to come to the town in the public here next month and say, uh oh, we got a problem. I want you guys to be ahead of schedule. And I just want to be, you know, everybody to be aware of what's happening out there. You know, it's another uh, protection for the township, more or less. It's not like we're going to call the attorney every day and use him every day. It's a protection that I feel right now. You know, if I need legal advice, um, what step do I take from here to not get response? But at this point, I am getting responses. I don't know if you guys can see out there. You see some fast construction going on. But if it all of a sudden stops tomorrow, I want to have a legal group to take to take care of this. So last month's town board meeting, you said you were going to meet with the the, the industry representatives the day after. Mm -hmm. What was uh, the result of that, as far as you're concerned? What was the result of yeah. the Did meeting? Did they like, say they were going to take care of these issues? or if They were going to take care of the issues. That's what I told the board here this evening. They've kept changing hands here so many times. Right. You know, and communication was a big breakdown. You know, in, uh, you I don't know if you understand, but the communication thing, once that breaks down, everything falls apart. So basically, if I use my attorney to consult with their attorney, it's actually at the top. And with, by using our attorney, they can consult and talk to their bonding company and put them on alert, saying, listen, you guys want to fix the roads, your bond's in jeopardy. So we need to let them know that, you know what I mean? And I just can't pick up the phone and say, hello, the bond company, your bond's in jeopardy today because I just, I always have done it. I need legal services and professional services to protect the township here. But those services should be paid for by Luke Bruce. And if you need legal service to get them to do what they I agree to 100%. Do, then, then they should be paid in this way. Correct. That's why uh, Dewey needs to speak to our attorney to see on that aspect of it. But I just wanted to have this. Now, that's what I'm trying to say here tonight is we have an escrow account just to cover attorney fees and uh, engineer fees, which is $10,000. No, that's $8,500. What I'm saying is, in our agreement, if there is a disagreement between, let's say, JB and, and the people that are doing this temporary work, uh, this account, when it gets down to one-third, we ask for that to be replaced, but we also have to document everything that we take out of that account. And they have, well, the privilege, I guess you would say that uh, if they disagree with a bill, uh, then it has to go into a uh, arbitration. And what I'm indicating tonight is I'm a little concerned possibly about a bill that's um, where you have, when you're hiring a lawyer, uh, that is different than, than working as far as coming in in reference to just the road use. This is, this is possibly something that might be a disagreement. But if, if the lawyer works directly, like I said, directly related to talking to their lawyer about the roads, then those are available hours for that subject. Well, you see, but, um, basically we, we have a town lawyer, but then in this resolution we also hired another lawyer within the firm that had more expertise on that same issue, or on the issues that we have at, at this point. And um, I don't think we have a problem, okay? Mm -hmm. But I'm just making an, you never know. Hopefully they, they the real, you, know, you guys know as well as I know in the real world today, if you don't cross your T's and dot your I's and put yeah. them black and white. But they make promises when they want something. Yeah, you can tell me you're giving a million dollars for the shop, they don't do right. it, yeah. I just want to make sure everything is legal and everybody's aware of what's happening. 
You're you're absolutely right by yeah. wanting to yeah. have an attorney with the expertise yeah. after seeing the process before it's something you're gonna want. Well they have lawyers. They have lawyers. You have to have And you may even want to, to raise your bond amount. I mean it's we can't do that at this point, unfortunately. Well at, at a point you can and if things aren't going your way, you could also post that road and cease all their work on that road. It's within your, your powers to do so. And that's not true. We we did it on Bush Hill. You need an attorney to do that. Uh, we looked at all of that too. And um, that opens you to a lawsuit. Now, when you post that road um, and you shut their work down, um, you're, you're opened for a lawsuit which... Uh, for the town itself. The town is, does not have the capability of fighting a real expensive lawsuit. The threat, you hope, works. Yeah. I mean, and I think in your case it was the it threat. Worked, I mean, it ended up working well. It was the threat that worked. Yeah. Well, I mean, we actually, we did post it and we, we stopped their trucks for about three days. Okay. And they did the, the temporary fixes that we wanted. Yeah. And the, what, the, what you did work under the circumstances yeah. and it um, uh, possibly could work in our situation too, but if, if you really come down and push and shove and you, you post the roads and it costs them hundreds of thousands of dollars, they, they could come back on the town. There's two sides to it. That's why I'm looking for legal counsel. Yeah, you know, yeah. because if you say, well, go post the road, and I go post the road, and something happens, the town could never afford a lawsuit. So that's why I'm asking yeah. for legal counsel. It, um, but you got a good point. Yeah. We we're, already hit this. We're, we're learning, too, as we go. Yeah, and, and towards, the, towards the end of Dan had a real struggle to get the bond. I mean, yeah, we've learned that um, we don't have enough bond either. Yeah. And, um, and this whole process is um, basically we want to get as much work as we can done under friendly situations because if it gets to um, a real legal thing, the bond's not going to cover. No, no. It's going to cover maybe a third. Yeah. And we also, when you sit down and really sit down with the lawyers that know what they're doing, that bond isn't as secure as you think it is either. No, it's not. <laughs> uh, no, and I, I really don't think that the public understands that or understands how much it costs to actually fix the roads. It's a lot nicer to have good communication and go forward than it is to disagree and battle all the way through. It, um, this has been a, a real good experience. Uh, I don't know whether I should say a good experience, <laughs> but an experience to give us guidance yeah. for the next pipeline. Uh, we'll, we'll do some things a little different next time. It, uh, and I hope the state lets them build it in the summertime instead of the winter. Yeah. Now. But, uh, okay. Now you guys just need to act if you guys going to act on the resolution. You guys need to discuss and see what you want to do. That's right. We have done that. Right. I, I'd like a motion. On the sort of resolution for a... Uh, attorneys. Uh, on the attorneys. On attorneys. So move. Okay. There's a second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Existing local laws? Yes. Okay, that is. Whereas the town board of the town of Sanford in May of 1992 adopted a comprehensive land use plan for the town, and whereas thereafter the town enacted a mobile home and camp trailer park local law on August 16, 1979, and whereas the town enacted a land use local law in January of 1992, which has been amended several times thereafter. 
And whereas the town board has recently received two requests for use of agricultural land in the town for travel trailers and other uses not presently permitted. And whereas the chairman of the town zoning board of appeals has suggested that the town board take steps to develop a recreational vehicle park local law and upgrade the mobile home local law and establish a moratorium to provide adequate time to develop the new and revised laws and to report their findings back to the town board. And whereas it appears to be in the best interest of the town to have a study made for a possible update of the present local laws <clears throat> dealing with uses in an agricultural district. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board of the town of Sanford, in regular session, duly convened, does hereby delegate to the town of Sanford planning board, with assistance of the town engineer and town attorney, the authority to study the provisions of the existing local laws relating to permitted uses in an agricultural district. This resolution shall take Okay. <clears throat> I'll make that motion so we second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. <clears throat> okay. Now five is the New York State Safe Act. Well, I was approached by uh, a couple of my people that the town of Deposit opposes the New York State Safe Act. And I was asked that uh, it was what's the town of Sanford going to do. And I, I've written a thing here, but I, I would rather the board at least read it by themselves, I suppose, and then either amend it or change the, uh, the way that I wrote it. And, I do think that we should oppose it. The thing that I that gets me down is the, the fact that there was no public hearing. It was just done overnight, and uh, nobody knew. And uh, it goes against my grain anyway, and, and because of the uh, fact that uh, you know the, the bad guys are always going to get what they want, and, and here we are, law-abiding citizens, and we're getting the shaft to be blunt, and I think that this business of, of going behind our back was no good. And, I, and this is not only the town of Sanford, but you see that everybody has gone against this, this uh, SAFE Act. And uh, so uh, I could read what I wrote, but I, I'd rather the, the, the guys read it and see if there's any changes that they'd like to make before we submit it. And I suppose I should ask you to review it for me to see where I am, double negative or whatever you want to call it. But it's really, it's our turn to uh, oppose it as did the town of the uh, town board of a uh, deposit. That's my my part. Everybody had a chance to read it. <clears throat> Well, if you, if you, I'll read it if you want me to, but it says uh, the town board opposes the New York State Safe Act. The town of Sanford has, has their support, added I put down, uh, for the U.S. Constitution Second Amendment with a resolution opposing the recent enactment of legislation that would infringe upon our right as the public people to keep and bear arms. The town board it considers a recent enactment unfair and uncalled for because the vote was taken without any public hearings and was rushed through without any notification to the public. Uh, the town board also believes that gun control is not warranted as a law-abiding citizen should not be made to suffer due to those who misuse the privilege of gun ownership. There are always those who will get firearms regardless of any rules or laws. The strict enforcement of already existing laws to the fullest extent is the answer. Too many guys do that and there's no punishment that they could get away with. 
The town board also believed that the Safe Act legislation passed by the New York Assembly and state infringes on the right to keep and bear arms. This new legislation would restrict the possession and use of firearms now in place by individuals in the town of Sanford for the defense of their families and property. Legal and hunting restrictions would also be in question. A copy of this resolution will be sent to uh, the Governor, Assemblyman Clifford Crouch, Senator Thomas Livis, and U.S. Congressman Chris Gibson. And that's our response to the Town uh, of Deposit Board. Well written, Louie. Very well. Yeah, very well written as well. I had to use some of uh, the Town of Deposit uh, words, but I wanted to have our own wording in there too. So. I, I think it's excellent. <clears throat> I think it's important. I think it's important. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, Thank you, Bert. You may want to correct my spell. Yes, that's what I was going to bring oh. up next if you wanted me to read these two. Okay. The next we had was um, a letter from Harry Hartz. And he um, addressed it to Becky Ottens. It has been an honor to be a member of the Board of Assessment Review for the past few years. Due to my health, I must resign from this position, position effective immediately. Because of my condition, it would be difficult for me to sit through the review sessions. My best to all the board members and staff of the Town of Sanford. Sincerely, Harry Hartz. Too bad. Yes. <coughs> I believe you got one. Yes. Yeah, that's something like this. I think the board should accept that one. We got it done. Definitely. And I think it's done. Okay. We'll clear the right up something very nice about that. Okay. And the next um, was the letter from Carl King. Well, there's, there's basically there's three letters in reference to what went on tonight, and I don't know if it's necessary for you to read. Yeah, the one isn't quite legible you, anyway. You can mention who it was if you want to. Yeah, uh, one was from Sheila and um, Jesse and Carl Caton, and the other one is I read them also. from Dan Beagle. 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 Yeah, he's a farmer. Okay. But can I ask a question? Once you file these letters, what is actually going to happen with them and the content? Will that be passed on also now to the planning board that is going to review these issues? And that's I asked earlier when these letters were filed across the old letters. And the old letters from the year last year, so all these letters that people write, what, where are they end up in, in Elson's file? Well, a copy of these can go close to the... Yeah, we'll give copies to that. The old letters as well? Planning and zoning. Yeah. And who else? Well, there, there, were, there were a lot of letters from last year yeah. regarding this issue, like 80 letters. And people so open to the letters. Those letters are also passed on to the planning board that they have the motion for them to study it, so that this will be part of their study. Those letters are becoming part of the body of things to study and to take it to well, make copies and things. Right. Uh, we have that resolution. You can, you can just put that right into that resolution. So it can be going to the planning board. Oh, okay. Okay.
training, cost of training, <coughs> and reference to the computers. I know he said he was going to bring it to the board member or something. He said he's talked to Blue Storm Technology, told me, and he talked to Computer Emergency Room or something. He was getting quotes or something for the IT system for internet and, you know, basically having a website or something for the township. That's basically all I really know about. I don't know. I haven't seen any paperwork from anybody. Okay. Uh, well, how does the board feel that you want to act tonight? I got some new information, or do you want to wait until? next month when uh, he can explain? I'd rather hear from Kevin. Yeah, I think it'd be a okay. good I don't trust you. <laughs> well, I think it's a smart decision. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Doing a website for a town would be a really good idea. If there was a website where these kind of love issues that are being discussed could be posted, it would help a lot in the anxiety of people. So if, if we can move forward, if there's any plans for websites for the town where no minutes could be read, uh, that would be great. I think that's what that's talking about a little bit, but I'm not too positive, so like I said, it's something about IT, right? I would say... Well, it's, it's, we're not going to end up dating all of the uh, I'm one of them, I'm, I'm computer now. Stupid, what you really want to call it. <coughs> it uh, I've probably seen one before anybody else here ever seen one. But, uh, the darn little black thing was so smart, I didn't like it. <laughs> what, this telephone? Oh. It's smarter than you and I. No, it's, it's in the Albany International Parts Depot. Uh, so we'll table that until next month. And now, <clears throat> we have an issue as far as Doug, we're going to have to go into uh, executive session in reference to another lawsuit. Uh, would you feel more comfortable with discussing the top situation in executive session? Or? Yeah, I can get my report and then do the, the other stuff in executive session. Okay. okay. Uh, last month was really starting to pick up uh, a few large cases came up uh, I'm sure everybody heard about the dogs on Lumber Road there was three dead dogs found and dumped on Lumber Road uh, I've been working with Trooper Ray the New York State Police <coughs> with us as of now the dogs are removed and are being held uh, we do actually, as of today, have a few leads that we're going to follow up on. Trooper Ray is off until, I believe, Friday. And we're going we're gonna to go and follow up on the lead. I put a lot, of, a lot of time into it. And within the first the days, it happened to be a Nashville guy working up on Lumber Road, found the dogs, and had posted it on Facebook, of course, and spread like wildfire. And I received... 450 calls in a 24-hour period over this, and 275 emails, not just from people in deposit, but from people all over that were outraged with us. There really wasn't a whole lot we could do with it. It wasn't like they were dumped recently. It had to have been around like the 16th, 17th of November, around deer, the beginning of deer season. And it just happened to be the snow had melted and people could see them. Uh, one of the leads actually came from a guy in Otigo who just happened to have bought dogs off somebody here and they happened to be the same breeds. All three dogs were females, older dogs, and had had several litter pups. So hopefully the, the leads I got from an anonymous caller today pan out and we can end this thing because I'm still getting phone calls. And such we can hopefully end up at the end of this week I with this whole thing going on I actually started a, a sort of website off of Facebook so I could update people and not have to call everybody back and the people really like it there's over 100 people on there now and, and people are using it it's on, on Facebook uh, to, Deposit Sanford dog control. Dog control. 
Um, I've got a lot of other court cases going on now. I, I think I've got 15 or 16 tickets pending right now. So I've been in and out of court. Things have been a little overwhelming and it's, it's hard to get, get used to everybody does a little different each court is different. I try to spread it around the stuff in the village. I try to get to the village and stuff out of town. I try to do the standard closing and stuff in the town and the court. Everything is a little different and, and it's hard, hard to get used to that and try to remember everything. Uh, one thing I wanted to make sure is that the town attorney is on a retainer. Yep. If I could use the town attorney because when I write tickets to the standard dog leash violations, the DA will possibly them. So the town attorney has to pass on. And I want to make sure that otherwise I would have to go to all the Agnes Department. We don't really get all that money back or if I write it to our our town laws, all that money comes back to us. I think we better run that by the town attorney. Basically, <clears throat> town business is through a retainer, but um, <clears throat> uh, how do I say it?